welcome back to another fabulous confabulation with me, Jay Mills. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Alexa Curtis, who is the CEO and blogger of Life Unfiltered with Alexa Curtis. She is the former host of the radio Disney show, Fearless Every Day, and does public speaking at colleges where she discusses how to be fearless, as well as mental health and social media. Alexa has also been featured on platforms like Forbes, The Today Show, Huffington Post, Ted Talk, You're So Beautiful Now, and so much more. Hello, Alexa. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for the introduction. I'm such a fan and excited to be here. Of course, of course. And so I know you started your blog as a, fla a fashion blog. And so what made you shift it to a blog that talks about, you know, the challenges of teens and young adults that they face daily? That's a great question. So I started the blog when I was 12. And the more that I began to speak about my own personal experiences, and honestly, the more that I guess got out there and really presented these experiences and opportunities to myself, the more that I started struggling with a lot of body image issues and confidence issues that so many young adult women deal with. And I felt more comfortable as I got older to start just speaking about them super casually. And then when I was 18, I was asked to speak on a panel with this online therapy platform called Talkspace. Uh, and it was on social media and mental health. And after the panel, I just realized like, how much I enjoyed talking about these issues and no longer talking about fashion. And then when I signed with Disney, that was really one of those moments for me where I realized that I just truly enjoy talking about more personal issues than things that I find to be or can be more superficial. Yeah, no, that's amazing because I feel like um my story is pretty much similar like with my girl empowerment blog it was like based off of the stuff that I was going through and I think it's important for like people to take that leap if they're going through something to share their story because you have impacted so many people with, with your platform and I hope that I could do the same with mine as well and it's just it just shows like you know whatever you're going through like definitely you know speak on it because it can affect other people so that's amazing totally mm -hmm. So you have a Be Fearless Summit event happening at Vanderbilt soon. Can you take us through like what happens at these events? Yeah, so I started this program back in 2018 and we premiered the first summit at Drexel. And when I had the idea, I really didn't intend for it to become anything. It truly just was like an idea that I didn't even expect to make money off of or anything like that. And then now this is our third summit and then there's one uh, with the University of Connecticut in the fall, which is pretty cool, but it's basically just a full day conference geared towards young adults, really helping empower and inspire them to be fearless and get out of their comfort zone. Tons of different awesome keynote speakers. Like this year, we have the founder of True Religion Jeans, Kim Gold, Mandy Tifi, who's Selena Gomez's mom and was the producer on 13 Reasons Why. Uh, so we just try and create a really awesome day that helps empower and inspire young people to be fearless. So how can people go to this event? Is it just for Vanderbilt students? Like, can anyone come? Like, I would love to come. <laughs> yes. So the event can be found and is totally available to everyone, even not Vanderbilt students at BFS, just BFS at Vanderbilt.eventbrite.com. And I can send you a promo code too that you can share that will give you guys free tickets. But usually the tickets for non-students are paid and then the tickets for students are free. This year also there is a grant form for Care Bears. So they came on as one of our partners to give away $500 to an aspiring entrepreneur and that there's no age limit or anything. So I would certainly say that if you are in need of $500, we haven't gotten as many submissions as we did last year. So there's certainly room to win that 500. Uh, so certainly send me uh, like a message and whatever, and I'll send you the code and would love to have people who listen to your show attend. Yes, awesome. And it's, it's in person or it's virtual? So there's an in-person event if you're in Nashville on May 21st, but then the actual summit, which is May 22nd is virtual. Perfect. Okay, awesome. So we briefly mentioned how you were the former host of the Radio Disney show, um, Fearless Every Day. What was the process of pitching that to Disney? Like, that's so cool. 
So that was a hard, oh my gosh, when I think about that, that was like the most strenuous procedure of my life. So I was living in Boston at the time and I had found a producer list online and sent a mass email out that basically was like, hi, I'm Alexa Curtis. This is what I had done today. Uh, are you basically interested in me? There was no concrete pitch or anything in it. But at the time I had also started this little like online movement called Fearless Fridays. So I would do something every week that got me out of my comfort zone. And I got one reply from someone at Disney and took a meeting with them. And between the first time we met, which was in November of 2019, um, we kind of talked and met up until March. And then I signed the contract with them and they were the ones who really kind of took that Fearless Fridays movement and wanted to do a show based on it. So it was called Fearless Every Day. Now the Radio Disney brand in general had never done anything on things like social media or bullying or body image. So it's not common that they take someone who I guess at the time, was like a nobody like I was. I mean, I had done a lot of different things, but I wasn't anyone and kind of believe in them and give them that opportunity. So it was really interesting, especially because they had never talked about those topics before. Uh, so yeah, so I signed with them in March and then actually they said, they came back and then actually said no to the show. And then for six months, it was like terrible. For six months, then no one got back to me. And then in June, they were like, okay, we're going to say yes again. And then we went into production in August. So it just made me really realize how you always have to be on your toes in any industry because you never know what's going to happen. That's crazy. Yeah. Do you feel like a lot of different opportunities stemmed from that opportunity um, being on Radio Disney? Yeah, I think just being a part of the Disney brand in general came with so many opportunities. But that being said, I would never attribute any of my success to that company because everything I had done, I had done on my own. So it was a platform. I mean, I think certainly when I signed with them, I had a bit of a different expectation of what would happen when I left. Uh, I always envisioned like more TV than radio, but I was so grateful for the opportunity and I'm so glad that I did it and look forward now to working with maybe a similar company, but that's aged older. I mean, I was... I was 20, 20 when I signed with them. You know, they're known for 12 and 13 year olds. So just off the bat, it was a bit of a struggle for me to kind of sink down to like the level of kids when I wasn't a kid. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you also got to interview like so many amazing people oh, on yeah. the show, right? So like, who were some of your favorites? I know that's like such a hard question, but like, you know, who were some that like really like stuck with you and like really inspiring? I always get asked this question too, and there's so many, but I would certainly say like one of my favorite people, I don't know if you're familiar with the app Headspace, no, but no. it's like the biggest meditation app out there. I mean, the guy's like a billionaire now, but the founder, Andy Pudicombe is amazing. So I interviewed him, a friend of mine now, Montana Tucker, who's just like this really inspiring like dancer. Uh, I had uh, the show Breaking Bad, Okay. The main guy's wife, I, Lauren, started a nonprofit and she came in with her business partner and they were super cool. And then I interviewed like all the kids from Dance Moms, uh, Olivia Sanavia, who's one of my really good friends now. And she's just so cute and like sweet. So we tried to make it a mix between like Disney people, but also just kids and people in general who are doing amazing things in the community. Nice. That's awesome. And I feel like that's also an opportunity to like network with people and then like form those like friendships and relationships or business relationships with people. So that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. And it, I think like anyone who's presented with that kind of an opportunity should always say yes, because it is incredibly inspiring to be able to have that experience and walk away with anything new that you didn't have before. Right, exactly. Yeah. During this pandemic, feeling burnt out has been prevalent in many young adults' lives because of school, work, and there's just so many deadlines. Do you have an experience where you felt burnt out and how did you overcome that? Oh my gosh, yeah. Like pretty much like every three weeks. I mean, when I actually was in the beginning phases of my career, I was getting burnt out so bad and I have always struggled with anxiety and depression, but unfortunately, sometimes I never really know, like, am I get, am I depressed or am I burnt out? So now I would say I probably have like one bout every year of like really bad burnout. And it actually happened two weeks ago. And I knew like when I said yes to this, 
project, um, something like unrelated to the summit that, that something was going to happen. And it did. And I got like, so depressed for like six days and it sucks because when you run your own company and you can't like perform, it's like, nothing's getting done. Um, but luckily now I feel like I'm so used to almost how to like overcome it and make it be only six days and not 16 days. But I think being able to discuss like openly mental health, I mean, anyone who works for me, like I honestly just sent them a message and was like, you need to, I can't do this this week. So just handle it. And that's a really beneficial and like good place to be in because I don't ever think it's something that should be not openly spoke about or like looked down upon. It's just life. But yeah, and I know so many other people who deal with burnout, students and everything too, and it just sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, and then that's when the question is like, how do you incorporate self-care into your life? Like, I feel like everyone should take that moment and be like, what am I doing to help me to relax and backtrack, set boundaries and all of that, which I am just now realizing is super important because I'm also like, yes, I could do that. Yes, I could do that. Yes, I could do that until it all piles up. And then you're like, ooh, I don't know if I can handle all of this. So Self-care, definitely important. <laughs> yeah, and I hate to say, like, don't say yes to everything because I'm a big advocate of saying yes to everything. But I also think that you need to be, like, wise about what you say yes to. Because if you're saying yes to things that are not, that, like, you walk away from and you're like, why did I do that? Then it wasn't worth it. Just don't say yes to everything unless you really see value in it. Right, exactly. What do you like to do in your free time? Ooh, in my free time, I really like, okay, so I'm really weird. And people think I think I'm really weird. I think people think I'm really weird. I don't like to be outside. Like I don't enjoy being outside. I don't like hiking. My ideal day is like, <laughs> wake up on a Saturday, have like therapy, go to a pool, read a book and go to dinner. I don't like like long strolls in parks and <laughs> we'll find this very odd. I don't know why. I just love to go out to eat. <laughs> Yes. And, but yeah, like other things, I mean, I love working out. I love cooking. Like I love those things, but my ideal like day off is really just like reading a book and like going out to dinner yeah. or like or something. That's not weird at all. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I told someone the other day at the gym, uh, he was like telling me he had gone on a trip and all these hikes. And I was like, that sounds like so awful. And he was like, who doesn't like to be outside? Like I like to walk, like I love walking in New York. Right. I wouldn't like actively leave the city and like go to Connecticut and hike. <laughs> right. I, would, I, I like coffee shops and restaurants. Restaurants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is your favorite restaurant? Oh my God. Which city? I guess in the city since I'm in the city. Okay. In New York, I love Takahachi, which is sushi in the East Village. Ooh. I really, really like the Smith. Have you ever been to the Smith? Yeah into the smith uh -huh. and it's so overrated but it's always amazing no i always. know it is overrated but no their food is great it, i mean it's it makes sense <laughs> it's expensive but it's good i really like tacos at la esquina that's like my favorite place for tacos and then um i really like the crosby street hotel oh okay. it's I've heard of it, super yeah. like cute and pretty and um there's always like really cool people there but those are my favorite what are your favorite places in the city um, i love seymour's uh okay yeah. Um, what else do I like? I like, uh, <laughs> I like Empanada Mama. <laughs> I've never been there, but I love empanadas. So good. So good. Um, what else do I like? Oh my gosh. That's such a, oh, Bob White. They have like really good, like Southern food and like yeah. fried chicken and all of that. Um, Sweet Chick fried chicken is, have you been to Sweet Chick? No. They opened one in LA recently, but yeah, Sweet Chick, Sweet Chick. Okay, because I lived there, I lived in New York probably like five, six years ago now. So I don't know that all the restaurants you're saying were even there when I was there. But Sweet Chick was like the first fried chicken in Brooklyn. Like fried chicken and waffles. Okay. Phenomenal. Oh my gosh, okay, I have to go there. Oh so the good. The cafeteria is also good too. Cafeteria. What is it? Caf the cafeteria. It's like- Oh my God. Yeah, and um, what's the place in Union Square that closed? Coffee shop. Coffee shop, I've never been it's there. It's closed now. Oh. But it was just like best. It wasn't coffee. It was food. It was amazing. It's it's old now, but it was good. Dang. Okay. Well, I'm going to take notes of all those recommendations you gave me because I love to eat. Yes. 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 <laughs> tell me what you like. Yes. I'll tell you. If you could give teens and young adults only one piece of advice or a reminder regarding mental health, what would it be? 
Specifically about mental health? Yes. I guess my piece of advice would be know your limits. The more and older that you get, the more you experience and can kind of gauge when maybe those feelings of like anxiety or depression or stress even come on. And I think being able to like know that that's what you're feeling quite often I find, and I think we can all relate to this. You don't ever want to like sit in those feelings or like really think about them. But I always like whenever I even become friends with someone or have a falling out with someone, I actually really like to make like almost let those feelings marinate because then you know for future relationships and experiences exactly how that made you feel so i would say that everything that you do anytime you feel burnout or anxiety whatever it is really think like how is this making you feel and go deeper into it like is this making is the anxiety making you feel really stressed out is it making you feel sad is it making you feel manic uh and then again like being able to analyze and know when those feelings are coming on to hopefully prevent you from getting to that next level of anxiety, depression, or burnout, whatever mental health stuff that you struggle with is really, really, really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a good point because I feel like there's like a lot of things on social media or like those quotes where it's like, not suck it up, but they're like, you know, like, don't, don't like acknowledge those feelings. Like, just be happy, be positive. And it's like, okay, I can't let these, I can't let these feelings eat me up. But then when you're telling yourself not to let those feelings eat you up, then it eats you up. So it's like, yeah, it's definitely important to acknowledge that as opposed to like putting on the fake smile. Yeah, and I think we live in a culture where people, there's a sense of glamorization surrounding like anxiety and depression, you know, will you get more followers? And it's quite frankly, so fucked up. You can like leave that word out. So on top of that, whoever you follow on social media and stuff, you know, I see videos all the time and it's like, or you, you know, you see someone posting about their vegan lifestyle and then in real life they're eating like, shit all the time or they're sober and then you see them drinking and it's like you know you can people seek out authenticity and you can feel when someone's not authentic so so like trust your gut on who you follow because there's no reason to be inspired by someone who's not real online and offline yeah and and speaking of social media um you know you talk about social media on your platform and you speak about it so how do you not get caught up with comparing yourself to others or you know taking social media too seriously well i mean i don't take it as seriously now probably as i used to because i'm like so aware of my company and like what it it's there for i don't look at social media as this fun thing for me like social media is a business if I didn't do what I did or do I wouldn't honestly I would be anonymous like I think about that all the time uh so I don't I don't look at it in the same light um but that being said what was the other part of the question that you had just like how do you not get caught up with comparing oh yeah I mean look I'll go on sometimes or I know people there's like certain people that I guess I would consider to be like triggers for me that I look at or feel intimidated by or like why are they more successful and I always just try and remind myself that their journey is not my journey they like I didn't have any connections when I started they prop like a lot of most people who have a lot of followers a lot of the times like we're very well connected or people you see in magazines so I think Unfortunately, that's the reality of, of especially the entertainment industry. So I kind of just try and remind myself again that that's not my path and that I just have to put my head down and, and not be distracted by those people because who like they might hate their life. I don't know. It doesn't what you see on social media and the Internet, even if you know these people in real life is not what it's cracked up to be or what they showcase. Yeah, no, it's such a facade, such a facade. Yeah. yeah. So what are some of your biggest goals? <laughs> My end goal is always to have another show. So like what I had on Disney was really great because it kind of gave me a glimpse and showed me what it is that I want and what I don't want out of a show. But that is certainly my end goal and always will be. So I would like to by 30 have a network talk show. And I would also like to probably continue to build this summit program up and maybe sell it. I don't see this program as something that I would like to do for the rest of my life. Okay. Because it is, I, I like, I'm in TV, like I started in TV, I'm obsessed with being on camera. So I don't love this. Like I love it, but I don't love it as much as I love shows and interviewing people. Right. Uh, so it's kind of like all of these projects that I do are like my side hustle, even though I make a living off of it, it's my company up until I get that TV show. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I mean, you've talked a lot about how you've, you basically built this company 
up by yourself. You didn't have those connections and stuff. And so I'm sure you had, hopefully you had a wonderful support system. Did you? And like, who are some of your role models? Um, like, did I ever wonder? I mean, like, not really. I didn't. Uh, I think I would be lying if I say I did. I have like a really broken relationship with my sister. My parents were kind of MIA when I was growing up. So I don't feel like I did, which is why I think it's really amazing what I've been able to build because I didn't have any help. That being said, if you like are listening to this and find yourself to be really wanting to do something, but are getting like negative feedback from your parents or your family, like things that I, I mean, I, my mom, my mom was not supportive of me pursuing this career path initially. I mean, her and I are very close now, but when I was younger, I don't feel like we were as close. Uh, so if you're someone who struggles with your family not supporting you, I think the best thing to do is find people who you can tell the things that you want to do too, and share those more intimate things that maybe your family doesn't want to know with so that you don't get discouraged by people telling you not to do it. And I dealt with that even when I was in like public middle school and high school, all the teachers were like being in entertainment and fashion is so stupid. And like, why would you do this? And so I literally just, I mean, I, I would say 99% of my entire journey up into like bef between 12 and 23 of starting this blog was then people telling me not to do it. And I always just do the opposite. Right. Now it's easier. Uh, but no, I, I would say do not let, don't, do not be deterred because people tell you not to do something. I mean, look at how far you can, you've come. So yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. You really just have to follow your, your passion. And I literally, I have proved it to myself that it works out and it does work out. It does. That's yeah. actually truly inspiring. And I congratulate you on all that you have accomplished thus far. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. It's so inspiring to see other young people, especially from the East coast, like doing something amazing. Thank you. Any career path has its challenges. And I mean, you've talked about a little bit of it, you know, as far as the support system. And you mentioned in previous interviews about how there was a lot of rejection. Is there any other challenges um, that you faced on your journey of being an entrepreneur that you would like to share? Any other things? Yeah, uh, I mean, I have I've faced so many different experiences, both positive and negative from the beginning. And I would say that one of the biggest things for me to have to learn to overcome is being told I'm not good enough or being defined by the following on social media. And that's always the question that everyone has is like, okay, I want to start a company or I really want to be an influencer or whatever, but I don't know how to get the following. The following is not really relevant until it's relevant. If that makes sense. I mean, you have to start somewhere. So to get overwhelmed, like bringing it back to when I started, started Instagram wasn't even around. So like, I didn't even think of that. I started a blog. I mean, all of these techniques, even when I was using LinkedIn to get networking job, like and side gigs to be making money, those are all still relative, but people get so caught up in this social media game and think that they're a failure because they don't have millions of followers. No one just gets millions of followers. You have to do something. So like, quite frankly, stop being lazy and put in the work. The world is not just going to do it for you right. or like shut up and get another job. It's like so, it's so simple. I know. I, I, I strongly dislike those like jokes where it's like, oh, I'm just going to drop out of school and become an influencer because they think it's easy, not because there's like passion into it. And they just think that it's just like an easy job. And I'm like, it's really not an easy job. No, you, it's, it's not. Work, right. No. And, and I mean, any, any job is a job, but it's also important to realize that the people that you follow online, just because they have a hundred thousand or a million followers, a million followers on Instagram does not make you a business owner. It does not make you a CEO and it does not make you an entrepreneur. It is if you're able to make money like I am and I don't have a million followers. Um, but that being said, if Instagram went away tomorrow, I could still run my company. I still have my website. I could still do TV segments. That is a business. There's a whole financial side to it, you know, accounting and taxes. It's not just like, you know, there are people who have a million followers and get paid $20,000 to post one photo and that's it. But that to me is also not a business. That's just like luck until it runs out. Like what can you do offline that makes you now a business owner? Yeah, no, that's a great way to look at it. And I think yeah. that's a great piece of advice to give yeah. to the 
who are watching. Totally. <laughs> so what is the ultimate message that you want people to be left with after they attend your summit, listen to your podcast, or are just scrolling through your platform? Just get out of your comfort zone. Like let my story be a reason for you to pursue whatever it is that you've been probably too scared to pursue because people have told you not to, or because you don't feel like you are confident enough in your idea. There is no such thing as failure. Like anything you do, even if it doesn't work out, you will do something else. One of the questions you had that I, I actually just thought up uh, about like something that had happened career-wise and especially rejection. I mean, when I was living in Boston before I got that Disney show, I had sent an email out to a bunch of other producers and had gotten this big meeting back in 2017 with um, this huge production company. And I went and met with them. I thought they literally were going to give me like a talk show. It was a devastating meeting, the, the head guy. And he literally, like th this company makes literally all the movies you see on TV. Basically was like, what, like you're literally irrelevant. You don't know any celebrities like give up. And I walked across the street and sat down on these stairs and my friend filmed this video of me that's on YouTube that literally was just like me being like, I can't do this anymore. And it was so unstaged and it was so raw. And three years after that, where do you think I was filming the Disney show on the, like the building across the street is the exact stairs of where that show was. Um, like, so the radio Disney offices were across from where this production company was. And that is just so crazy. When I look like, it almost like makes me like, like, um, get like goosebumps because yeah. it's just crazy. Yeah. That's wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. wow. The, so that's just how it works. The universe just works in crazy ways. That's amazing. Yeah. That's it like, does. oh, that's so inspiring. It like, this is just, this whole conversation has been so motivating for me. <laughs> oh my God. Same to you. You're so, you're so easy to talk to. Like sometimes I'll, you know, it's always the worst when uh, you talk to someone and they like don't really know how to like ask questions and stuff, but you're very, I'm very impressed. No, and vice versa, like when I'm talking to someone and like they just kind of just answer it with no personality and I'm like, okay. yeah. <laughs> you just have to be like, okay. Right, and just move on with it. You started your blog, fashion. So we're going to do a little this or that fashion edition. Okay, are you ready? I'm so ready. Okay. Fancy or casual? Fancy. Mm, good choice. <laughs> Sweaters or crop tops? I guess it depends the season, but I would say I'm newly obsessed with crop tops at the gym, but sweaters, like cropped sweaters and high-waisted jeans. Yes, that's a look. Yeah. Blazers yeah. or jean jackets? Blazer. Mm. Earrings or necklaces? Um, necklace. Yeah. <laughs> shirts with a statement on it or shirts with a pattern, like with a pattern on it. I was recently told that now that I'm 23, I'm like too old to wear things with so many patterns. So I'm probably going to say statement, but I'm like a big pattern person. That's a thing. I don't know. My, it was my sister who was like, you need to stop wearing all of these patterns. Like you're too old. And I was like, I Absolutely. So I went to H&M and bought like five pairs of black workout pants. And I was like, these are cute, but they're not as cute as my pattern pants. Wear your patterns, girl. <laughs> I know. Well, then I did like reevaluate and I was wearing some pretty ugly patterns. I get a little confused sometimes if I think something's very cool looking. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually really ugly, but it takes me a second to realize it's not cool. It's ugly. <laughs> but I'm, I get confused. It's cool to somebody. <laughs> you know <laughs> to, to me to me <laughs> sneakers or heels sneakers. sneakers i am a sneaker obsessed human being beautiful yeah. all right and do you have any last advice for the beauties who are watching i don't think so i would just say again like i said throughout the whole thing like be fearless do something every day that gets you out of your comfort zone and follow your dreams Wow. Awesome. 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 Like I said, it was awesome talking to you. This is the end of our conversation. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to hear it. Of course. Of course. And remember beauties, Alexa is a girl with beauty and brains and so are you.